Some people love him. Some people hate him. Uh, some people probably don't have a super good idea of who he is. But today we're going to talk about Emil Bemstrom. Uh, is he? Is this as good as he's going to get? What is his future with the team? And uh, finally, we'll give out a grade. That's all coming up today on Locked on Blue Jackets. Your Locked on Blue Jackets, your daily podcast on the Columbus Blue Jackets, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Lockdown Blue Jackets, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. I am, as always, your host, Jay Foster. Here with me is my co-host, Hayden Hanson. We are here to uh, give you the good, the bad and the ugly of our favourite team and yours, the Columbus Blue Jackets. Before we get started, I want to thank everyone for making this your first listen of the day every day. Lockdown Blue Jackets is free and available on all podcast platforms and over on YouTube and also the uh, Sirius XM app. So uh, check us out on any of those. Also going to let you know that this episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook partner of the Locked On Podcast Network. Make every moment more and visit fanduel.com slash locked on to date. Get started. So this is an episode that I knew immediately. I was like, okay, there's going to be a lot of conversation here um, because I feel like for a guy that has mostly been a depth player for this team, Emil Bebstrom is super polarizing. You know, you've got some people that have, you know, I know I've seen people that are like, yeah, he could be a 30 goal scorer in this league. And then I see people that call him Emil Bumstrom, which I, or Emil Buststrom, which I think personally is rude um, and unnecessary because he's only 23. Um, and also, you don't got to, you don't got to do the guy like that. Like he's just out here doing, doing his best. Um, but Emil Bemstrom, I think is one of those players that, and again, it's, it feels like it's a very similar thing to Eric Robinson in the, he has so much potential. Can he reach that potential? So let's let's start there. Emil Bemstrom had 21 games with the Cleveland Monsters this season and 31 points with them uh, before coming up to the Blue Jackets where he had 22 points in 55 games. Now, 22 points in 55 games for a guy that's making $900,000 a year, I feel pretty okay with that. How do you think his season has gone? Is he doing better than expected? Worse than expected? Is he kind of for better? Is he about as good as you think he is going to be? Yeah, I see. I think highly of him. I thought highly of him when the Blue Jackets drafted him. I think he, gosh, I don't know where he was at the draft, but I remember when the Blue Jackets got him. Me before he even ever put on a Blue Jackets jersey, watching his his Swedish league highlights. I remember thinking like, yeah, if he can somehow turn this into NHL quality, he's going to be dangerous. Like he has some great fundamental skills that you see from time to time. But you asked me, how did he do this past season? And another situation, same as Robinson. He was a ghost for a huge portion of the season, Jay, a crucial portion of the season, season, excuse me. January 3rd through March 7th, no goals. Played every game, or most of the games. He played 23 in that time span, and he had zero goals. I just feel like that is where I go back and just say, I need more production on a consistent basis as a fan of this team. Um, He did well when he would play up with Goudreau and Boone Jenner. I thought he he did some really good things, or – or just when he played up just in general in the lineup, I thought he did some good things, but then he just disappears for parts of the season. And I don't know why. And it just, it's frustrating to me because I just go back to that first night we drafted him. And I just was like, I was so excited about him, but he's only 23. So it's like, there's still time. But when I look at this past season, it's like, where did you go for two months? Yeah. In, as to, in terms of and the blue jackets have had their share of streaky players. And, you know, I think, I always think about Oliver Bjorkstrand, who would sometimes go like 10 or 15 games without scoring and then score like 12 goals in the next seven games, you know? Um, So I'm not, you know, the Blue Jackets are no stranger to streaky players. Bill Bemstrom, again, I think is one of those players. Like you say, he has these flashes where you see the player he could be. And you see, yeah, when he's up on that top line or that second line, he looks good. But I don't know if looking good on the top line and looking invisible any other time is necessarily a reason to keep him on that top line, you know? Um, 
He was a former fourth round draft pick. So the fact that he has done like that he's got here, I think is a pretty good, a pretty good um, indictment of his play. Uh, I'm going to try and pull up the 2017 draft list and see where, like, see a couple of people who were drafted kind of ahead of him. Because I feel like there are some <laughs> names on there that you're like, oh, I definitely, <laughs> you know, I definitely yeah. want to over this guy. But, um, I don't know. He's he's such an interesting player because I feel like he has, like you said, he has those flashes where he could be really good. And then occasionally I'm like, where did you go? Like there was a couple of seasons ago. I can't remember which season it was. Let's see if I can pull that up. Uh, it would have been, oh, it would have been the 2020, 21 season. So we only played 20 games. Um, he had three goals in that season and uh, all three of them were in the same game. Yep. I was at that <laughs> like it was, I think it was against Nashville. Yep. He didn't score yes. a single goal. In, in, in yes. the entire season, and then it was like this. The, I think it was like the last ten games of the season or something. It's somewhere in there. He suddenly scores a hat trick, and I'm like, okay, yes, that's the guy that you can be. You know, they lost that game, by the way. The Blue Jackets did. did. Blue Jackets. In overtime, in overtime, <laughs> they lost that game. And Emil Bemstrom, anybody that was at that game that somehow remembers that, you know, Emil should have had six that game. Like mm-hmm. that that game was the Emil show. And he should have had six because there was three chances he had before that that he absolutely blew. And then he had and then he ended up having three goals. And then the Jackets lost the game. But I remember that was the first game I was at since COVID, since COVID had came, you know, died down and fans were allowed back in the building. I went to our bar that night. I did have the best night at our bar you could possibly have because there was nobody there. But there was like kind of the perfect amount of people there. And like it was just, yeah. It was a good night. Let's just say that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but the game was not good. Well, it was good because he had a hat trick, but he also should have had six goals. So that's why I, like, I think about him, and that's who he is, right? It's like, yes, you have a lot of points. You do stuff, but you should be doing more stuff. Like, yeah. But he's only – so it's just frustrating here's for a, him. Here's a stat for you. Um, drafted in the fourth round in 2017, there was only one other player – in the fourth in, was taken in the fourth round that has more points than him, and that's Drake Batherson from Ottawa. Uh, he has outscored but guys that were taken. Okay, so guys were taken in the first round in 2017 that he has outscored. Uh, he has outscored the 15th overall pick, the 16th overall pick, the 17th overall pick, the 25th overall pick, the 31st overall pick, the 23rd, the 14th. But- the seventh overall pick that was Elias Anderson for the Rangers, who has really not panned out the way that they were expecting. The 18th overall pick, 24, 26, 28, and now we're kind of getting into guys that have never played before. So, like, I don't, I don't remember how many names that was, but he's outscored at least what 10 of the guys that were taken in the first round in 2017. <sighs> yeah, but he's getting a lot of shakes, though, is my point. Like, he played 55 games this year. 22 points is good, but I, I want more is what I'm saying. And I think he can bring that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he's he was so talented when he was in Sweden. And he still is talented. I'm not saying he's not. Um, How, like, that should translate. Because he's got all the right hockey skills. Like, he knows he has a sharp one-timer. He has speed. He has, like, he's a guy, actually, sometimes that I think he needs a little bit more bite in him. Mm -hmm. Don't you think? Just a little bit more. Now, he had a couple plays this year where I remember I was like, man, Emil just was crashing the net hard there on defense. It's too bad, you know, our goalie let up a goal there. But uh, he has good plays away from the puck. But I don't know, just... I want him to shift it into that next gear. I don't know what it is. If it's just scoring goals, great. I, I'll take that. But he has another gear that he needs to hit, and he needs to hit this year because it's a, well, he's going to be an RFA, so the Blue Jackets can lock him up. But the Blue Jackets are investing in him by giving him all these games is what I'm saying. So he needs to turn that into points because he ha- he, he has the talent to do it. You know, like he scores amazing goals. Just – do it all the time. That's all I ask. I know it's a that's a tough ask, but <clears throat> it is. Yeah, it's 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 a tricky one. Um, and we're going to talk about that in a second. Actually, let's let's try and figure out 
does Emil Bemstrom have a place on this team in the future, or could he be replaced by someone else that can do basically the same thing he does, but maybe a little bit better? And so we're going to talk about that in just a second. But first, uh, we've got to talk about FanDuel, uh, because we love FanDuel here. It is the uh, official sports partner of the Locked On Podcast Network. And during the NBA playoffs, you've got to make a fast break to FanDuel, because right now, new customers can get a no-sweat first bet up to $2,500. That means that if you bet, if your first bet doesn't win, and you can bet up to two and a half grand, if you don't win, you get that money back to bet it again. Like, that's that's incredible. You know, think about how many bets you could make with that $2,500. There's no better bet. There's no better place to bet all of the playoff action than America's number one sports book. You could bet on, like I said, the NBA playoffs. Baseball is happening right now. NASCAR. Uh, can... NASCAR, exactly. <laughs> They've got everything over at FanDuel. And uh, you could probably even place a bet on who's going to be the next Blue Jackets head coach. Uh, I don't know who the favorite is there, but I bet you can put some money on it at FanDuel. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Get a no sweat first bet up to $2,500. Once again, that's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the NBA and uh, also us, the Locked On Podcast Network. Welcome back to Locked On Blue Jackets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Jay Foster. With me is my co-host, Hayden Hanson. We're talking all about Emil Bemstrom today. Uh, so here is a here is a thought that I had just as we were kind of wrapping up the, the last segment. Um, Alexander Texier will be back with this team in in October. Do you take Emil Bemstrom over Alexander Texier? Like, because that to me feels like you could only, you, there's only room for one of those guys. Do you, which one would you take? That's, that's a tricky one. That is a really, really tough one, Jay. Because I think Bemstrom. Which has, one's taller? <laughs> I'm yeah. just kidding. That's not what I'm going to base so it on. Bemstrom, I think, uh. has a higher skill ceiling. Texier, I think, has a little bit more snarl and a little bit more bite. Um, and in does, the, yeah. kind of the, the short time that I have, I have started getting to know you, uh, I've started to kind of piece together what your, what your favorite players are. I like, I like, I like, I like competitive yeah. hockey players, like guys that just show that they're interested in the game when they're on the ice and are playing fearless. And I think Emil Bemstrom, he has all the talent. He just needs to play a little bit more fearless. I don't know. I don't know. That might work. Just that. <laughs> um, yeah. But, yeah, I do like those type of hockey players. Uh, Texier, yeah, he doesn't strike me as that guy when I think of Texier. I also think of a lot of skill with him because he has all that. Um, it's tough because we didn't see Texier last year for obvious reasons, and I don't know who I'd take over that. I think I don't want to say that that hurts Texier in this situation, but just based off that – I'm going to roll with Emil Bemstrom, and he's 23 years old, Jay. He has a decent future in this league ahead of him. I believe that. I just think he needs to do it in Columbus next year and just find that hockey player in you that just wants to win the Stanley Cup. Like I feel like it's just so easy to say that as a fan, but like I don't know how any hockey player on the ice thinking about the Stanley Cup couldn't have the best shift of his life. Like. <laughs> You know, so that's where my mind is at with Emil Bemstrom. I don't like the mean comments about him. Uh, one of my friends had he just at that Predators game. One of my friends called him a dirty bag of socks. That's why I know that he had a bad oh, game no. that game because my friend called him a dirty bag of socks. And then he had a hat trick. Well, he like heard your friend and took yeah, it personally. <laughs> it's amazing. Like he just but that's that's who he is. Right. That game is who he is. Like he just. The, there's a lot of plays where it feels like, man, you had a beautiful pass over to you and you have that awesome one timer. But can you put the one timer in the net? Can you not, you know, miss the net on that one, Emil? Uh, maybe you'd score a few more goals. But again, I'm being hard on a guy who's only 23. So it's like. I can't I can't quit on him yet. I feel like so, every single episode that we've done a season review for, we're like, but he's only 22. And every so every time I'm like, <laughs> man, this team is just, this team is just 22 to 25 year olds. And yeah. like Johnny Gaudreau, like that's mm. it, you know? Um, but because here's the thing, Emil Bemstrom has a ton of potential. And like I said, 
for a fourth round draft pick, even if this is as good as you're going to get, you know, uh, what is he about half? He was about half, just under half a point per game this season with the Blue Jackets for 900k. Like that feels pretty good to me. Um, probably he's going to get a little bit of a raise uh, next season if they resign him. He's an RFA, so the Blue Jackets still kind of mostly hold all of the cards. But I think to me, the biggest thing about this season for him was that season that stretch they had with the monsters. So it was with the monsters between October 14th and uh, uh, November 5th had a quick spin with the blue jackets came back down to the monsters. And then between 11, uh, November 25th and December 22nd, he was there. Um, and in those 21 games that he played, he had 14 goals and 17 assists, you know, he was just lighting it up. And at the time I really disagreed with them taking him out the AHL, because it feels to me like Emil Bemstrom is a very confident-based player. When he's mm-hmm. when he's confident, he's elite. If he's holding, if he's gripping the stick too tight, if he feels like he's making mistakes, then he starts to fall apart a little bit. And I think that's something that he maybe needs to work on. Obviously, there's no point us, you know, speculating about this guy's like mental strength or you know whatever. But he feels like a, a player that when he's confident. He can do anything. He can uh, light it up. Yeah. And so that's that's the, the Emil Bemstrom that I want to see next season. It's the Emil Bemstrom that had 31 points in 21 games for the Monsters. I don't think he can necessarily replicate that kind of scoring pace with the Blue Jackets. But if Emil Bem, if you can get, you know, 15 to 20 goals out of Emil Bemstrom, which for my money, I think he should be able to do. Um, he's never played a full A2 game season. Uh, he had 10 goals in 56 games in his first year, three in 20 games second, six goals in 41 games last year, and then seven goals in 55 games this year. You give him a full 82-game season. Um, I might have that on my uh, my math that I did a while back. Let's find out. Uh, yeah, so he would have scored, well, he would have scored uh, 10 goals. He was on pace for 10 goals this season for 82 games. I think he can double that. I think mm-hmm. 20 goals is achievable for Emil Bemstrom. Mm-hmm. Absolutely it is. They just have to put him in the right situation. He's get he gets top line shakes, so I don't see I like the, I feel like they trust in him a lot for obvious reasons because he when he flashes, he absolutely flashes a lot like Texier does, just another guy that that also reminds me of that. But Emil Bemstrom is here right now. He wants to be here right now and if, as long as he's committed to being better and listen to whatever coach the Blue Jackets hire, he can be this great hockey player that we want him to be. It's just he needs to do it more consistently. I got. I know it's it's tough because, like, who are who are the opponents in some of these games? Were they going? Was it a t- you know? I don't know every single game. I didn't. I don't remember every single game with him. But twenty three games without a goal, like a long time. That's a long time. Like you gotta score, Emil. You have to score. You have to score. I, 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 you can have droughts. Patrick Line famously had that drought in Winnipeg. I think it was like I don't. I don't have it off the top. I think it was like twenty games or something without a point, and people were like, "This guy kind of stinks," but he's Patrick Line. He'll be fine. I kind of feel that same way about Emil. Like, yeah, he had twenty three games without a goal. But he'll be fine. Like he's Emil Bemstrom. Like he can. St- like he has an incredible one timer that everybody that was at that preseason game when he first put on a Blue Jackets jersey remembers. It was like the it was like the first five minutes of the game. Jackets went on the power play in a preseason game, and I told my little brother who's about to be in high school. I told him I was like. This guy, he reminds me of Ovechkin. And then they moved the puck over to him, and he just one timed it in the net. And I was he like, that Patrick I was like, Lainey, Alex Ovechkin, one timer power mm-hmm. play shot, like down. Like, I think that's a huge strength for him. Um, I don't know how much power play time he got this season. Let's see if I can find that. Um, his most consistent line mates this season were Liam Foody and Cole Sillinger. Uh, those, that trio played 55 minutes together this season. Um, Emil Bemstrom in total, played. which for a huge chunk of that goal streak, six minutes, and f- like tw- like less than twenty percent of that, less than ten percent of that is was with that trio. So that, that's part of it, I think, is the consistency is mm-hmm. a thing. He's still young; he's not been around for a long time. 
Uh, he's got, what, 150, 172 NHL games experience. Um, you know, so he doesn't have... I think it's tough with young players to be able to go and just play with literally anyone. So that's what I would like to see from Emil Bemstrom uh, next year, I think, is give him consistent line mates and see what he can do. You know, it's all well and good putting him on the top line and then putting him on the third line and then putting him back up to the top line for three games and then bouncing him back down to the fourth and then healthy scratching him. You know, give him give him consistent third line minutes, third line pairing. Like if, if that is Liam Foody and Cole Sillinger and that's our third line next season, I feel fine about that. But just let the guy, give the guy more than 45 minutes with one line, you know? Yeah, getting 55 minutes with Cole Sillinger, that doesn't sound like that's going to produce a lot of points. And obviously, that's probably why he had 23 games without a goal is because a huge chunk of that time was Brad Larson looking at Cole Sillinger being like, this was a guy who was hot last year, Emil Bemstrom. This is a guy who was, who's was who been hot in the past. They're both young guns. Send him out there. And it didn't work. That was one of the lines that I'm sure Brad Larson was hoping he got a little bit more out of. But um, if it, if it, what was the line again? Emil, uh, uh, Liam Foody, Sillinger, and Liam Foody. If I'm ranking those, Three I'm going struggled this season. Let's ra- can we rank them? I kind of want to rank them. Sure. Okay. I mean, I know, I know. So I still believe in Cole Sillinger. Cole Sillinger okay. is far and away the best player of those three players. I think. Okay. Um, I think Emil Bemstrom. Over, I think I take Emil Bemstrom over Liam Foody. I think I go Sillinger oh, wow. Bemstrom Foody. Okay. In this, in this scenario, I think I'm going Bemstrom. Or I think I'm going Foody Bemstrom Sillinger. I did not like Cole Sillinger this year. I this isn't a Cole Sillinger review, but if Bemstrom's getting a lot of time with Cole Sillinger, I can see why that maybe didn't spark because I think those are just two guys trying to find their way in the NHL. Like yeah. maybe maybe you do need to pair Emil Bemstrom out there with an older, savvier center like Sean Crowley, who's played tons of NHL games. Um, maybe that would work. I know Crowley's a completely different player than Emil, but you know, sometimes that can clash in a in a good way. Yeah. Let's uh let's move on. We'll we'll wrap this up. We'll give out a grade. I'm gonna finish this off just by saying uh of Emil Bemstrom's seven goals this season, that's how many he scored, right? Seven? Yes. Do you want to take a guess at how many of those were on the power play? I'm going to say three. You are correct. So, wow. So almost half of his goals were scored on the power play, uh, and he only had 72 minutes of power play time of his 586 or whatever it was. So something, something's not added up there to me. Uh, but we'll finish up. We'll talk about that in just a second here on Locked on Blue Jackets. Okay, let's. Let's let's unpack what I kind of left us on um, before before our little our little pause there. I'm doing the math on this: three goals and 72 power play minutes. Yep. I'm trying to decide in my head if that's good still or not. We also had three assists, so we had of six of his 22 okay. points came on the power play this season. I need the uh, apples to go up. Yeah, you should be getting more assists than points. Or more, you can't get more assists than <laughs> points. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you should be getting more assists than goals. I feel like I, I just feel like that should be a steady rate. Every player is trying to go for is more assists than goals, and so, so yeah, that's not those numbers aren't great for him. Um, I don't know though. But he's only twenty three. <laughs> I'm just gonna lean back on that. <laughs> I'm also uh, gonna just. Uh... Not my my favorite stat necessarily, but uh, one that I always like to look at. Uh, he only took three minor penalties this season. That's proved- good. That's really good. No, that is good. That is we can build off that. Keep yeah. that going. Good so job, he's Emil. Great at yeah. drawing penalties, uh, and he's also pretty good on the power play. So, like, I feel like there's something there. Um, but before we go out a grade, knee jerk reaction. How many points is Emil Bemstrom going to get next season? And how many? How, what does he need to do to get that next contract from Columbus? It's tough to predict because you don't know what which coach is going to come in and where he's going to play him at, how often he's going to play him. But I think in a year where he gets the same amount of time that he got this year, if, if that translates, if that happens again, I think he could be somewhere around 40 or 50 points. I think he can... I, I would like to see him double what he did this past year because 
half a point a game, less than half a point a game, I think is not good for what I think he can be. You know, like I, I just, I don't know. Like, I feel like he has all the talent. I can't, I can't explain it. Like, I feel like he has all the talent. He's just missing something. Um, if he adds it, if he finds a little bit of it, I think his point production will go up. So I'm going to have him as a prediction, maybe 35 points. I don't think he'll quite double, but I think he'll have a 35 point season coming up. Yeah, I could, I would be, I would be happy with that. Um, yeah, like I said, I think the, the upper limit of what Emil Bemstrom is capable of, I think if, we, if he can get 20 goals, that is a phenomenal. I would love to see between 10 and 15 goals for Emil Bemstrom mm-hmm. this season. Like an ice time dependent, like he might come out and wow everyone and suddenly he's getting top line minutes. I don't know that he fits into the top six just because looking at the top six wingers that the Blue Jackets have at the minute, like of... Goudreau, Line, Marchenko, and let's go ahead and assume that Kent Johnson is going to be in the top six as a winger this season. I don't take any of those guys out for Bemstrom. No, 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 no. You know? So to me, he's going to be in the bottom six if he gets ice at all. So if you're getting 15, if you're getting 15 goals out of a third line. That's winger, great. Like, that I feel, is. I feel pretty good. Yes. About that. Thumbs so let's, up. Let's wrap this up. Let's give out a, what grade are you going to give Emil Bemstrom this season? <laughs> I, I want to flunk this guy. I do. I want to flunk him because I think he's, I think he can do more, but he did some good stuff with the monsters and I love the monsters. So I'm going to go D plus. Okay. Good D plus. I'm so, well, that's a flunk, right? Yeah. I'm going to go C minus. I don't want to flunk okay. him. Let's give him a C minus. That sounds nicer. Yeah. The grading system over there stresses me out. It does. Yeah. So I think D is yeah, like, we don't I, just get into it, but yeah, you need C's um, get degrees. Let's go C minus. He's, he's done enough to earn a You played for the Columbus blue jackets degree this past year. Yeah. C minus. <laughs> and I'm, I'm still going to go back on. Um, I think I've closed the tab now, which is really annoying. Uh, Please, yeah. is it the draw the penalty? That was good. No, that helped it was him. it was the where he is in terms of scoring for the 2017 draft. I think he's like 25th or something in scoring okay. out of all of the draft picks. So like, I'm still, I'm gonna give him a C because I think like just look looking at the point versus contract situation. True, 22 points out of a guy making 900k. I feel like is pretty good. But like I say, if he's going to get a contract next season for or next off season, to me that needs to go up. Um, so I think C, maybe a C plus, uh, but with a, definitely a note saying that we're going to check back next year, and if you don't improve, then we're going to start having problems. I feel like twenty four <laughs> is when you start. Twenty four is obviously when you hit your peak, but I feel like once you st- once you get to twenty four, you should probably be around about as good as you're as you're going to be. You know, you should be mm-hmm. starting to enter your prime. And if he takes a step backward next season, then I think we're probably going to start to have problems. And <laughs> the Blue Jackets have a ton of middle six to bottom six guys that can easily step in and take his place, you know? So I feel like Emil Bemstrom is not specifically on the hot seat, but I feel like those third and fourth line wingers, there is a lot of competition. There are a lot of young mm-hmm. guys coming to, uh, to take your spot. Yeah, like I... I was looking for anybody to take Emil Bemstrom's spot this past year. I was like, man, 52 is not getting it done for me on the ice. Like he, he, he just, he just wasn't this past year. Like when I think like, yes, the point production is there for the money he's making. But just when I think of like my thoughts on him, like watching him this past year, my overall thoughts on him as a fan, it was slight disappointment, like just slight disappointment. Like is. And I don't know what it is, but that doesn't last long in the NHL. So, yeah, the fact that he's got uh, a, another contract for one more year going into – or I guess the fact that he's got a contract this year, I, I can't even get my words out cor- correctly. <laughs> the fact that he is playing with an NHL team this year, he should not take that for granted and do something more with it and earn a lot more money in that next contract, which I'm sure he is putting in the offseason work towards doing. So. It's it's gonna be really interesting. He's a guy that I'm, again I'm gonna be. I feel like I've said this about literally every player review we've done, but he's a guy I'm gonna be paying attention to during training camp, during preseason, because uh, I feel like he more than any other player, his job is kind of on the line here. But uh, that's kind of what we got from Mo Bamsum today. 
Uh, speaking of those guys that are lining up to be those third and fourth line wingers, uh, tomorrow we're going to talk about Igor Chinikov, who is a player that I adore and a player that who, again, like basically every Blue Jacket this season, struggled. So we're going to talk a little bit about him, his future with the team. Can he be that 30-goal scorer that I think a lot of people think he can be? Uh, so that's tomorrow's episode. Thank you for listening. Thank you for making this your first listen of the day every day. Box and Blue Jackets continues to be free and available on all podcast platforms over on YouTube, where I believe we are 12 subscribers away from my next milestone, which is very exciting. Uh, so if you haven't hit subscribe over there, please feel free to do so. Uh, you can find Locked on Blue Jackets on the SiriusXM app. You can find me on Twitter at underscore Jacob Foster, J-A-K-O-B-F-O-R-S-T-E-R. You can find Hayden at Hayden H971. You can find the show at L-O underscore Blue Jackets. If you have comments, questions, criticisms, you can email us at LockedOnBlueJackets at gmail.com. Thank you once again for listening. And until tomorrow, make sure you stay locked on.